A structured DevOps process is critical to your success when implementing velocity applications. Over the next few minutes, I want to show you how Capato's Salesforce native DevOps application provides this structure and enables IT teams to manage velocity changes more effectively than a manual or homegrown solution. With Capato, you first configure your development pipeline. This pipeline consists of the various Salesforce sandboxes or scratch orgs that you'll be using to deploy Velocity and Salesforce metadata upstream. As these deployments take place, Capato will also provide quality gates and conflict resolution along the way. Furthermore, while your team uses point and click here in Salesforce, Capato is going to automate all of the right Git operations in the background, maintaining version control for each of your sets of velocity changes. These numbers and arrows on my screen indicate where there are containers that are available to be deployed upstream or back downstream to synchronize your orgs. Now, what do these containers look like? I'll click into one, and you'll notice here that we have labeled this object the user story in order to map your requirements from Agile tools like Jira, Azure Boards, among others, conveniently presenting your team members with all of the necessary fields used to manage their work. This particular user story container is set to start in the Velocity Sandbox, meaning that Velocity Sandbox is where the changes are first going to be made and then they'll be deployed up through the orgs in our pipeline in the correct order. So after I make my velocity updates in that sandbox, I need to link them to this user story, or in other words, fill up my metadata container so that it can ultimately be deployed upstream. To do so, I'll click on the Commit Changes button at the top of my screen. And then I'm presented with a grid of all of the metadata from the Velocity Sandbox. Now, because Capato incorporates Velocity's build tool technology, even though Velocity changes are made using data records, you can locate them from within the same grid used to select other types of Salesforce metadata. So if I wanted to search for data raptors, Omniscripts, or any other type of Velocity records, I can use the type filter to do that. In this case, I'll locate my Velocity UI layout for this user story. And since I know there are a number of other components here that play into the layout, such as cards, templates, etc., I'll click the Get Velocity Dependencies link. And my dependencies are going to be automatically identified by Capato and selected, which prevents time-consuming errors during deployment. Now that I have everything that satisfies the requirements for this user story, I'll click the blue Commit Changes button in the top right. And I'm brought back to the user story, but a number of operations have been kicked off in the background. First, Capato will create a new feature branch in my company's Git repository and commit the velocity records with their changes to that branch. Additionally, the versioning and Git operations will all be logged here in Salesforce against the user story record. So when I click on the sub-tab labeled Commits, I'll see each unique commit that was done, as well as a running list of all the changes that are linked to this container. These records, along with the Git history, give you the ability to retrace your team's steps and follow the incremental changes. I can click on this link in the top right that says view in Git. And when I do that, I'll be presented with the commit itself in the version control system. And so I can see the JSON files here that are versioned and my incremental changes are even color coded for me. Now I've filled up my container, but before I can deploy it, there may be tests or approvals that management would like to enforce as to not let any changes be promoted, but only those that are of high quality. To kick any of these tests off, I can use the lightning actions directly on the user story record. One example of these quality gates is leveraging fusion tests to check for any regressions that may have resulted from my changes. Another gate could be a pull request, which will then require an approval from management. 
This button will open that pull request as well as log it against the user story in this sub tab labeled quality gates, as you can see here. If I click into this pull request record, I also have visibility surrounding the approvals, rejections, or comments. And it looks like this pull request was in fact approved, meaning that Capata will no longer prevent me from deploying it. Another helpful tool for collaboration is overlap awareness, which will alert you if multiple people are working on the same piece of metadata. As I click into this sub tab, I'm provided a status for any components that have a potential conflict with someone else's work that's similarly in progress. I can click into this component and I'm presented with a list of the other user stories that are similarly making changes to this Velocity UI template. In this case, just user story five has overlap. And I can see whose story this is, which environment their changes are in, and we can begin to work collaboratively to get in front of this before it becomes a merge conflict. I'm able to open a pull request on this right side, comparing our versions of the UI template and work proactively to see if there are some accommodations that we need to make together. Moving back to the pipeline manager, this is where I can deploy my user stories from. I committed my changes against the Velocity Sandbox, but it appears that it's not the only user story ready to be deployed from that environment. I have a number three above the forward arrow, and I'll click to determine which stories I want to move forward with and which I want to deselect and hold back. After I have the stories that I want to deploy selected, I can click on the blue button in the top right to build and execute the deployment. Kapata will deploy the Velocity JSON files to the target environment, as well as automate the necessary Git merges in the background. If I do happen to run into any conflicts, the deployment will be temporarily paused and I'll be presented with a screen like this, where I can see the components that have conflicts, in this case, just the Velocity UI template. I'll click on Resolve and I now have a screen where I can see what's being introduced in the feature branch on the right, and then I have the resolution version on the left, which is my working canvas. I can type changes directly in here, or I can use the arrows to pull changes from the feature branch on the right to the left in the resolution. After I've finished building the proper resolution, the deployment will continue, delivering my changes to the target environment and logging all of those actions in the Salesforce reports and dashboards. Every commit, deployment, test that is run, approval, etc., are all logged in custom objects and custom fields in Salesforce, meaning that you have powerful DevOps analytics at your fingertips now to make more informed decisions, whether it be how your sprint is progressing, a breakdown of team-based metrics, where all the deployments in transit are at, such as how far through the pipeline they've been deployed and the status of each deployment, and the lead time of your releases or how long it takes for your features to reach production after the development has been completed.